Welcome to the final installment in this Best of Flex Wheeler series. This matchup features the 1993 Arnold Classic version versus the Mr. Olympia version of the same year. 1993, without a doubt, Flex Wheeler's best year. Now, judging by this front relaxed position, and it's darn near impossible to say one is better than the other, the upper body appears to be a little bit tighter, perhaps, around the obliques. The arms may be a little bit more vascular as well on the part of the Mr. Olympia version. But when you look at the legs, I believe the Arnold Classic version might have an edge there. So it's very difficult, and I want to make a educated decisions on these, and we have quite a few comparisons. So in this front relaxed, I'm going to definitely remain inconclusive. This quarter turn is very revealing. The Mr. Olympia version is definitely getting an edge here and getting a point. Now, like I said, I'm not going to be delivering points very easy, but it is plain for me to see. Look at that chest. The striations much better in the vascularity in the arms. Now, of course, there's always timing, and you have to take that into consideration, but we have to go with what we have. I mean, sure, he could be flexing at the right time here, but... In my opinion, judging by this pitcher comparison, Mr. Olympia is edging a victory, one nothing. This front double bicep is a little bit hard to judge. Now, I, I didn't give the 93 Arnold Classic version a point in the, uh, in the last match with 2000 Arnold Classic because of his silhouette. Now, anybody that knows bodybuilding personally and does it themselves, they know when you expand your rib cage in the front double bicep. You sacrifice the uh, the ab development. And guys in particular like Nasser Olsen body, he would crunch down to really get the ab development. And that that's what he is doing in the Arnold Classic version. And it does create a whole lot more visible conditioning. But of course, in the Mr. Olympia version, he is doing that rib expansion. and He is sacrificing the look of conditioning. But look at that, the, the silhouette. I hate to be making excuses, but it makes sense what I'm saying here. It's impossible to make a decision based on these two shots. Now, here's the type of comparison that I'm going to be awarding a point. Look at the conditioning edge of the Arnold Classic version, without a doubt. The Mr. Olympia version in this comparison seems to be a little puffier, a little perhaps a layer of water. Who knows? Look at the vascularity even in the legs. I received a comment a few videos back. I can't remember exactly which one. Somebody claiming that vascularity, vascularity does not mean conditioning. Well, I'm here to tell you I am going to continue to judge that way. I mean, yes, people have more veins than other people. But here you have a clear comparison. The same man and the vascularity edge goes to the more conditioned athlete for sure. It's ridiculous to think otherwise. Ooh, the first of the back comparisons, and this is a dandy. We usually uh, aren't fortunate enough to have such a good comparison. Now, I don't know if this warrants a point or not, but I believe the Arnold Classic version in the lower back, look at the Christmas tree area. Is it just me, or is it a little drier, perhaps? Both versions, fantastic. Look at the tie-ins of those Latin insertions. Just as crisp as a Phil Heath, perhaps. Of course, Phil Heath not given the credit that he deserves in the lower Latin insertion area. But, I mean, Phil Heath is, or, I mean, Flex Wheeler, rather, is very competitive against him. Just incredible. I don't know. Like I said, I, I can't really justify giving him a point here. I'm going to call it an inconclusive. The rear lat spread, it's hard to say. Now, it's a, definitely a blurry pitcher as far as the Mr. Olympia pitcher is concerned, and a very, very super clear one, the Arnold Classic. Ah, this was the best one that I could find of the Mr. Olympia version. There was one more clear one, but it was very oblong. His, his right lat, it never flexes out as far as his left one. I don't know if I should deliver a point here for the Arnold Classic version. It is plain for me to see that it is the better back shot. But like I said, it's so blurry that 
I think I may remain inconclusive on this one, but that's too many. I can't keep doing that. I'm going to give a slight edge to the Arnold Classic. And here's the comparison that I've been waiting for, the rear double bicep. Now, individually, both of these are just head and shoulders above all else as far as flex is concerned. Two of the best rear double buys you're ever going to see. I'm going to give a slight edge to the Arnold Classic version. The Olympia version seems to be a little bit more thicker in the lower lat insertions. A little more muscular, perhaps, perhaps. But it is evident for me to see that the lower lat or the lower back actually the christmas tree area is holding perhaps a little tiny layer of water in comparison to the arnold classic version now if you look at the glutes it's definitely plain for me to see the arnold classic gets an edge although i have to give the mr olympia version props here no other flex wheeler double by could touch this one besides the arnold classic this is a tight race, ladies and gentlemen, but it seems to be tipping the way of the Arnold's classics, which I'm sure Arnold would appreciate that. And we're winding down in this competition. Here's the ab and thigh, and I, I have to say, these pitcher, the pitcher quality of the Arnold classic is much better. It is a lot blurrier, and it's hard to tell with the conditioning. Although, if I had to guess here... The obliques are better in the Arnold, or in the Mr. Olympia, rather. But is the feathering better in the Arnold Classics? Hard to say. Like I said, that blurriness covers the conditioning up. Unfortunately, in a perfect world, we'd have just unbelievably good pitcher quality for all of these events. I don't know. Like I said, I hate to deliver points in this one. It's so close without really knowing who is the better. So slightly inconclusive in the ab and thigh. And we're going to finish this competition off with this most muscular comparison. And I usually like to have direct comparisons for these best of series. But I've already made my decision. I know which one I've already choose for a better version. So I'm going to base my decision on aesthetics for this one. Which one I prefer. And to be honest with you, I am voting for the Arnold Classics version. Look at the obliques. You can really see the conditioning. He just looks like a raw piece of dried out meat. Piece of beef jerky for sure. The hands clasped of the Mr. Olympia version, not without its charms at all. And I think would rival any other version. So I think hands down, the Mr. Olympia 93 is the second best flex wheeler, but... The winner of this entire competition and the best version of Flex Wheeler, in my opinion, is the 1993 Arnold Classic version. So I hope you enjoyed both series, the Mr. Olympia and the Arnold Classics. And I really hope you enjoyed this feature of the Mr. Olympia versus the Arnold Classic. And look forward to more of this variety. As usual, I'd like to thank Flex Wheeler himself for all the hard work that he put into his physique. Perhaps the greatest physique of all time. The 1993 Arnold Classic Flex Wheeler. Hard to beat that man on a bodybuilding stage. And I'd like to actually thank Arnold Schwarzenegger. Without him, we may not have seen the best ever Flex Wheeler. I think this is the first one that the Arnold's Classics had defeated the Mr. Olympia version of any of these series that I've done so far. So, ah, get to the chopper, get to the chopper. There's my Arnold impression. Hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day.